the pain.
morning, Trinity. It's my job to welcome you all this morning. Um, so why don't you stand as we pray before we sing? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are abundant in love and life. Lord, that you call us to yourself. Lord, I pray that your spirit would just move this morning as we lift our voices to praise you. Holy Spirit, would you come?
Good morning, everybody. Welcome. So good to have you with us. Please take a seat. Thank you guys for leading us in a rousing opening number. Um, welcome again. I think I said that, but you've got to be <laughs> safe in these circumstances, haven't you? It's good to see them. Yeah, just in exactly. Case. <laughs> very, very good to see you. Great to have you with us. A special welcome if you're joining us for the first time today. And um, if you're watching online, hello. Nice to see you. Hi, mum. Um, say hello in the <laughs> chat if you'd like to. Um, QR codes. On the back of your chairs, you will find some QR codes which you can scan with your phone and they're there to tell you a bit more about what's going on um, and uh, if you'd like to give. Um, and so, today is one of our community Sundays whereby our children and our young people will be in with us for a, a little bit longer and we'll be worshipping all together. Praise the Lord. Isn't that fun? Sorry, my name's Joe. Yeah, good morning, and my name's Simon. And so today, we're continuing our series on God's wisdom for real life, and we've got a real treat for them today, haven't we, we Simon? We have, we have. We're talking about money and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So that's money you can and... See. Yeah. You can see the excitement. So much excitement. <laughs> money and stuff, not money and stuff. Important. Um, so, yes, quite a broad topic, but uh, we'll do our best. I've got something. I, I was feeling really generous this morning. And for you, Jill, I've decided I'm going to give you this phone. Is that generous of me or what? Wow. You can see. So, for you, can you just, just take care of that? Is that all right? Wow. Look after I mean, it. Take care of it. It's a gift from me to you. That is so unexpected. Gosh, Simon, That's thank fine. you. They, uh, children's pastor wages, you'll be amazed at what you can afford. That, that is such an amazing gift. Thank you, Simon. I, I, I don't know what to say. That's fine. That's I, good. I promise. Just, I'll, just I'll, look after it. Okay, I will do it. I'll take, I'll take no, really no, no, good... No, no, no. What are you doing? Keeping it safe. No, you just don't put it in your back pocket. What's the point in that? You need to just use it. Use it to its potential. Think of ways what you can maybe bless other people with. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like it. That's great. Like yeah, it. okay. I'll, I'll do my best. Thanks. You got it. Okay. Well, I guess I'll, um, I'll have a think about how I can use this amazing, generous gift um, whilst we're worshipping together. So we're going to continue in our worship um, shortly. But mm. before we do, we're just going to turn our thoughts to the people of Turkey and Syria after the... Uh, devastating earthquake that happened there uh, earlier this week. So yeah, Simon's going to lead us in prayer. Just thought at the start of this service, because we all probably know what's happened over in Turkey, Syria. Um, I think the latest uh, death toll, I think it's coming up at 28,000 people now, which when you think about it, it's like, that is a lot of people, let alone all the devastation which is, which is, which is caused over there. Just reading here, there's no homes, no shops, no food, that people are really suffering. And I thought as a church this morning, it'd just be great just to stop and just to think and maybe just spend just for a minute just praying for all the, all the awful suffering what's happening in Turkey, Syria at the moment. And um, Pete Greggs gave him these four sort of um, things what we could maybe just think about for the next minute and just to pray about. The first one is uh, the people affected. To comfort those suddenly grieving the tragic loss of loved ones, those who've lost homes, those injured and scared. For the peacemakers, for, for the resilience and resources of the NGOs, the frontline workers, the medics, for all those who mourn to be comforted and experience the presence of Jesus with them. For the peacemakers, sorry, for the politicians, wisdom to cooperate and communicate well, making good and speedy decisions for those worst affected. And for the pastors, strength as they process their own trauma whilst also seeking to bind up broken hearts, caring for the poor, arranging funerals, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so many things, yeah, which is happening over there at the moment. So can we just have a, a minute, and just between you and God, just, just spend some time just praying for one of one of the things we've just mentioned and then I'll just wrap it up in a prayer in about a minute's time so just for the next minute let's pray
we pray for the people of central Turkey and northwest Syria whose lives have been devastated by the earthquake. Be present, O Lord, our good shepherd, to bring comfort, relief, shelter, and human kindness. Shield the people who suffer. Console those who are bereaved. Prosper the provision of the relief. Strengthen the work of the emergency teams and shine your light and hope in the midst of despair. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we are now going to worship the Lord together and bring joy where we can. And we can bring joy by worshiping our Lord and glorifying him. So please stand if you're able and we're going to worship the Lord together. everybody is uh, God's love is big so which is amazing right God who created the universe is able to hold all of that in tension the, the the trauma and the sadness of what's happening around the world but that he also calls us to celebrate and to worship um, so we're going to sing this kids song um, anybody who wants to come and do actions with Naomi is very very welcome
you, Lord, that you are the rock, the rock of ages, steadfast, never changing, always there, so, so dependable. Please do take a seat, everybody. So, I have been hard at work, multitasking, worshipping, but also using my gift from Simon to try and bless others. And just to be clear, this is Simon's, but he's given it to me. He's asked me to take care of it, and as he made very clear, use it to bless others. So, what have I been doing, I hear you ask? Very good. You're very good at this. You don't give yourselves enough credit. Um, my uh, first delivery, it says, should be here any moment. So keep an eye out for a delivery driver. Or t- oh, oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Um, so uh, I've ordered these. And I'm going to give them to someone to, to just to bless them. So let's have a look. Who looks like they need a bunch of flowers? So that's, that's our first one, and that's all thanks to Simon's gift. Now, where's James Clapp? There's James Clapp. He's panicking because he thinks I'm going to invite him on stage, but I'm not. Don't worry. I've used this to pay for your parking over the road, so you're very welcome. I know, too kind, but that's, that's okay. Um, the next delivery should be here any moment. Um, so again, keep your eye out for a delivery driver. Oh, lovely. Thank you. must be from DPD. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, yeah, and again, ordered this just to, you know, pick someone and bless them. So, again, let's just dive in, shall we? Um, upstairs. No, I don't think that would work. Who, who looks like they need blessing? Here you are, madam. That's for you. God bless you. Right. I, I mean, we're not finished yet. That's all the presents. Sorry, everybody, if you didn't get one. But um, next, um, yeah, so whilst um, we were worshipping, I had a picture for someone. God spoke really clearly to me, and he said, I want you to tell this person this thing. And so I used, I used Simon's gift, and I sent it to them, and hopefully they'll find, that, they'll find that really helpful. And also, I was reading the prayer mail and, and just trying to pray for the people in there as well. So hopefully, um, yeah. I think, I think Simon will be pleased. Oh, here he comes now. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. How so, are you? I'm good. So how have you got on? Um, been, been using it? I, d- I, d- I think so. Okay, I think, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, what I, have you done? Um, oh, so I've, I've, you know, tried to bless people by, by giving them some presents. So I gave Wonderful. out some flowers and some chocolates and paper. people's parking. I see some parking. happy faces out there. Yeah, well, well hopefully. Oh, that is thanks. so good. I'm so glad you, that's for, Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. You made my day. Oh, thank you, Tess. <laughs> and even a necklace to go with it. Yeah, w- why not? <laughs> <laughs> and scene. There we go. <laughs> it's an old actor's trick. When you want to finish something, just say that, and everyone goes, oh, yeah, it's a scene. That's good. So, <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed that little scene there. And what we're trying to get across is that this is how God feels about all of us. God is so generous, and he gives us all these gifts. It might be money, it might be stuff, it might be skills or talents, but they've all got one thing in common. They all come from God. And God wants us to take good care of them. He wants us to be good stewards of these things here on earth. But what he also wants us to do is he wants us to bless others. And so now, we're just going to pray together quickly. And what we're going to do, I'm going to ask everybody, if you can just to hold a hand or both your hands out in front of you. And the reason we're doing this is it's just showing God that we're ready to receive the gifts that he has to give us. We're ready for him to place them into our hands. But that's not all. We're also ready to then take those gifts and give them out to bless those around us, to bless the people 
in our lives and further afield. So let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for all the good gifts around us that come from you in heaven. Help us to take care, Lord, of the gifts that you give us and to be good stewards of them here on earth. And help us, Lord, to use our gifts to bless others and those around us. Amen! You can't do it with one hand. It doesn't really work. Um, we're also now just going to take a few minutes to pray for our team in Kenya. So hopefully we're going to see some pictures of the team. There they are. Um, and so if you don't know, there is a team from Trinity out in Kenya at the moment doing some fantastic work. They are training some women, some women in sewing. They've been visiting prisons, um, encouraging various churches, uh, doing some rural evangelism and also helping to plant a new church. So if we can, let's just pray for the team and the amazing work they're doing out there now. Father God, thank you so much for the team from Trinity who are out in Kenya. We just pray your protection upon them, Lord. We pray you would keep them safe. And we also pray, pray your abundant blessing, Lord, on the good work that they're doing out in Kenya. Would you fill them with your Holy Spirit so that you would pour out your glory, power, and might through them and all the wonderful work they're doing. Amen. Amen. And now it's almost time for our children and our young people to head over the road. But just before they do... Simon's yes, say a we've few got. Uh, we have the pr pr pleasure and privilege. You got the peas out there of uh, serving uh, with these amazing children each week. I've around about 80, 90 children go out each week, if you didn't know. It's crazy over there. But to make it possible, we also have an abundance of amazing team members. There's around about, I reckon, about 70 uh, who are part of the kids' team. So if you are part of the kids team who serve over at Trinity House. Could you give a, um, could you stand up, wherever you are? And could the rest of us, there must be, there's about 70 of us, there's not many here today. Oh dear, we're struggling. Any volunteers? Go anyway, on, folks, don't can, be shy. <laughs> there we can go. Can we give them a big Come round on. of applause? Yeah, can we? there we are. Brilliant. Thank you, team. And... Something very exciting. Thank you, team. Something very exciting. Holly and Adam have been doing an amazing job of rebranding the uh, kids' sort of work, what's happening over there. Uh, and you'll be seeing over the next sort of week many things appearing and blossoming uh, over there. And one of them is uh, we got a brand new Kids Leaders T-shirt. Do you want to see it? Yeah. I'm so glad they said yes. Here we go. The big reveal. So from next week, from next week, you'll be seeing all the kids' leaders and all the tots' leaders wearing these beautiful T-shirts. The front of it is playing. I'll be with you in a minute. One second. Can you hear that? Ooh. This is the front. It's playing. Get ready. Can we have a drum roll, please? Here we go. Here we go. So, yeah, all your, all your amazing kids leaders, TOTS leaders, will be wearing these from next week, just so they can see who's working with your children, who's journeying with your children, who's loving your children, and seeing them reach their potential in him. So um, look out for these. Look out for the new logo. And we need to pray now for these kids as they leave. Kids, get ready. We're going to pray and then release you. I want to thank you, Father, for today. I want to thank you for what we've learned so far, but we do now particularly pray for these children. Thank you for their heart. Thank you for them. Yeah, they're just wanting to learn more about you. And I pray for this morning that they're, each one of them, no matter how young, no matter how old they are, that they will get a glimpse of you this morning. They will get to an, a new understanding of you this morning. And um, they take, back, take that back home with them to their schools and their homes. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for the honor of working with these children. And we give them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, children, off you go. <laughs> so, yes, it's time for our, our younger people to head over the road, as Simon said, and to um, just continue to learn more about him and just share and be joyful together. In here, why don't you take a few minutes to turn to your neighbor or someone sitting closely to you, and um, we'll be back in a couple of minutes with our notices.
Okay. How was that? Have you got some nice neighbors around you? Yes, I hear the resounding answer. Good stuff. So it is, um, it's time for our notices now, but just before um, the team are going to send uh, the offering baskets around. I'm sorry, I was meant to do that earlier, but I forgot, so it's going to go around now. Um, but now we're going to hear our notices and I think we, our uh, announcements, sorry, and I think we've got a, uh, a short video to play. Hi, with everyone. Those on. Here are some key things that are coming up in the life of Trinity. Next month, from the 14th to the 17th of March, the annual horse racing festival is back at Cheltenham Racecourse. The town gets a huge number of visitors throughout the week, and whilst there's lots of fun and celebration, sadly, there is a darker side to it, as human trafficking intensifies across the local area. Whilst tens of thousands of racegoers pour down past Trinity at the end of each day, we invite them to talk with us. So from Tuesday to Thursday of that week, we hand out flyers and provide free donuts between 5 and 6.30 p.m. It's also an amazing opportunity to share the good news of Jesus. So there'll be teams going out to pray with people between 7 and 9 p.m. each evening. On the Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we will also be hosting IJM, who work globally to end modern day slavery. They are coming to join us for an evening of prayer as they tour local churches to see a wave of prayer activated across the UK. If you're interested in joining in with any of this, please get in touch by emailing hello at trinitycheltenham.com or check out our website for more information. Whilst Easter is just a couple of months away, Lent starts this month. So on Ash Wednesday, we will have a simple communion service on the 22nd of February in Trinity Church at 7.30 p.m. Over the Easter weekend, we're looking forward to 24 hours of prayer and worship starting at 6 p.m. on Monday, Thursday, finishing at 6 p.m. on Good Friday. One feature of this will be an exhibition of paintings and photos on the theme of hope. If you're interested in being part of the team to curate this, please get in touch. There are many ways you can connect into the life of Trinity. If you've recently decided to call Trinity your home, we would love to invite you to do three things. Firstly, sign up to our newsletters where you can hear more about what's going on week to week. Secondly, be a part of a life group to journey through life with a small group, praying and learning more about God together. And thirdly, serve on a team. God has given you gifts and this is a wonderful way to get to know people as well as grow those gifts and share them with others. So how do you do these things? Well, it's simple. Go and check out our website or you can email hello at trinitycheltenham.com. See you soon. Brilliant. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, so that's uh, what's uh, our key announcements. And we've got a slide coming up now with what's happening this week. And there's just one thing we want to highlight on there in particular. That's the Spear celebration that's taking place uh, on Monday the 13th in Fusion at 7 p.m. Right. Helly is going to come and bring God's word to us. So we're going to invite her up and pray for her just as she does. Hi, Helly. Enthralling, Morning. isn't it? Right. I'm going to pray for Helly and she's going to bring God's word to us. Father God, thank you so much for Helly. Thank you for her heart for you, Lord, and just all that she does in your name. We pray now, Lord, as she, brings, as she brings us your word, Lord, would you fill her with your Holy Spirit and would you speak through her as she speaks to us now. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Joe. Morning, everybody. It's good to be here this morning. I'm a little bit sinusy, so apologies. <laughs> I feel like the last couple of times I've come to speak, I'm just like, hello. <laughs> so just filter through that and try and hear what God's wanting to say to us. So we have been, haven't we, in the last few weeks in a series called Courageous Resistance. We're like digging our heels in. We're deciding what we want to stand for, the something that we'll stand for so that we just don't fall for anything. And then we're moving on now for the next kind of few weeks to think about not just kind of standing firm and standing still and standing rooted in the truths of God, but also then being forward, front-footed, and looking forward, planning ahead, based on the decisions that we've decided to say yes or no to. So we've all probably been filtering things in our lives and um, 
perhaps feeling a bit challenged by some of those things that we've heard from the story of Daniel. I mean, what an amazing character, wasn't he? Totally amazing. So um, I was asked to speak on money and our stuff, which I have to say is quite a challenging topic, um, given that the era that we're in and also just the sensitivities of some people having extreme um, financial resources and some people having small financial resources, some people being redonkulously gifted and talented and others feeling like, I can do this <laughs> and not, not really seeing what they've got from the Lord. So I really prayed um, about what passage to bring to us this morning and I hope um, the Holy Spirit speaks to you through his word because um, there are not loads of points I want to make about money and stuff. I feel like this is for God to shape our lives on and um, he does speak so many times about our resources in scripture. He talks about the use of our time. He talks about the use of our money. He talks about how we use the skills that we've been given. And it's all basically, the, the bottom line is, it's all his. <laughs> it's all his. And he gave it to us exactly how Joe and Simon were illustrating earlier. He's trusted it to us. Whatever we've got is, is an entrustment from the king. And what we then do with it and how we then work it out between us all on this planet is between us and God based on the value system and the principles that he has put out for us in scripture. So if you've got big decisions to make on your money, on your time, please can I encourage you to search the scriptures to be your lead on how you do that because God has really important things to say far too many for me to be able to condense into one short talk on Community Sunday here um, when we're all gathered together. But there's hundreds and hundreds of verses on resources. There's proverbs on the, the use of our wisdom and application of what we've been given. But this is the passage I felt God to, um, wanted to share with us today. And to be honest, it's one of my favorites anyway, so it's not a hard one for me to share because I feel like it's run through my life and quite often I go back into it and feel like God starts to speak to me in a fresh way for it. So I'm gonna try and share what I've um, felt God say through this and perhaps you'll end up going a bit off-piste in your mind because he'll land a phrase to you and that's totally fine because I just feel we want to hear God, don't we, on our money, on our resources, on our stuff, on our time, on the skills he's given us. So why don't we just pray now? And the passage is um, 2 Kings chapter 4. And it's a story about Elisha and his encounter with a widow. And it's really challenging. So brace yourselves. We're going to need to pray first. <laughs> so Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word stands eternal, that your word pierces us right into our souls. It starts to weave its way into our lives, into our decisions. And Lord, we ask your spirit to speak through your word to us today. Lord, challenge us, inspire us, motivate us. And Lord, help us to trust you more with everything that is around us in this world at the moment. In Jesus' name, amen. So, 2 Kings, chapter 4, just seven short verses, but goodness me, are they not completely packed with truth and treasure from God. Um, first of all, to say, the name Elisha, Elisha was a, a prophet in the Old Testament time, so... We're going back thousands of years here. But his name meant, God is my salvation. And often when you hear the name of someone in scripture, you're kind of beckoning into your own world, that aspect of your character. So when Elisha starts to interact with the widow, and you'll see what happens. Basically, if she, as she calls out to him, she's calling God be my salvation. That's what she's doing. And I think that's a really good place for us to start, isn't it? Who are we going to for advice? And, and there's a couple of warnings I want to give us that are going on in society at the moment. The media is going to put fear in us, to be honest, at the moment, because they've got an agenda. 
This is not a big conspiracy theory. This is just, you know, watch what happens to you as you watch the news. Do you feel more trusting in God or more fearful? (laughs) What fruit is it bearing? Be careful. Be careful. Be connected to the world. We're not meant to hide away like hermits, are we? But be careful. (laughs) So I think there's a sort of a fear that's been swarming around over the last few years that's really tried to land on us, and we mustn't take it as the children of the Most High God. We must call to God as our salvation. (laughs) There's lots of knowledge and information out there. That's the danger, knowing too much. It's the thing that was the cause of the fall. (laughs) The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I must know. And our kind of fussling around, as what I say, I I go on an awful rabbit warren on the internet. (laughs) That can be terrible because I want to know, I want to know. I even, um, Hill's talk the other night, it made me laugh. Even I want to know the end of a film or the end of a series before I can relax and watch it. Really weird, I know. (laughs) She said her daughter did it too. And I went, oh, that's just like me. Because I must know. And it's not very healthy. (laughs) It actually derails me. Because what's the counteraction of that is the wisdom of God. God is my salvation. (laughs) God is my salvation, not any information I think I may have discovered. So this this chap, Elisha, is representative of the salvation of God interacting with this widow. And so let's let's just um, look at um, what happens through this narrative in Kings that's been recorded and see how God's Spirit starts to speak to you and stir you. So 2 Kings 4, starting at verse 1. Lord, we just pray you'll speak to us. This is your word. This is your house. And we are yours. And all our stuff, all our resources came down from you. Every good and perfect gift came down from above to us, from the Father of lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. So God, we say, God who doesn't change, speak to us. And help us to see the good gifts that you've put within us, Lord. Amen. So, this is reality for this lady. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha. Remember, she's crying, God, be my salvation. That's what she's doing. She's crying to the right place. Are you crying out to the right place? for salvation, for help. And this is what she said. Your servant, my husband, is dead. This is brutal already. (laughs) This is real life. This is trauma that at some point we'll all experience loss. And the Bible doesn't hide it, does it? (laughs) It's here in the text. And you know that he revered the Lord. Here's a theological question. Why does awful stuff happen to good people? Hard. Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know he revered the Lord. So she has got a horrendous loss. And it's not going to be rewritten, spoiler alert. He's not getting resurrected in this narrative. This is a terrible tragedy. But she cried out to God as salvation. (laughs) She went to the right place in her pain and in her disappointment and in her confusion. And then there's another threat looming over her head because of this loss. There's been an awful um, implication Now, his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. So not only is there lost life, there's now a threat of lost resource and lost children. (laughs) If ever there was a sort of illustration of how the enemy wants to operate in our lives, this is it. Scripture in John 10.10 says that the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, kill, rob, destroy. But Jesus comes to bring life to the full. 
and she is living in the consequences of the broken world. But she's called out to God for salvation. She's beckoned Elisha to come and get involved as a representation of the Most High God. There's a horrible fear that's looming over her about what else could be lost. And I don't know, is there a horrible fear over you? (laughs) Really? With the era we're in, with the narrative that's going on, how are we feeling? I think we've got to decide (laughs) what we get front-footed on. And I don't want to just lie down and take it (laughs) when there's a battle going on where we can get on the front foot with this. So listen to Elisha's reply to her. He's speaking as the voice of God into her life, the saving power of Jesus. He says to her, how can I help you? I wonder if God asked us that question today. Have we kind of even thought to ask for the Lord's help? It's kind of like Christianity 101, isn't it? But I don't know why, my brain, sometimes I can just carry along and forget to ask. But Elisha's asking her, how can I help you? And then he says these amazing words. What do you have in your house? So she's had massive loss. She's got fear, tremendous fear of more loss. I mean, you know, imagine living in a life where your children could get snatched because you owe something. Horrendous history. But God has been working through that history very well, and he will continue to work in our story very well because he is our salvation. And he doesn't say, he doesn't focus on what are you scared of? What have you lost? What have you not got? So easily I sort of look around my house saying I haven't got a table. (laughs) I haven't got a dining room. I just want to host. But God's like, but you've got some sofas and you've got a cooker And you've got a really cool family that your student neighbours want to come and hang around. You've got enough to host. (laughs) We had a hilarious moment where we had some students who lived next door to us. And uh, they were like, can we come and celebrate our birthday in your house? (laughs) And we were like, don't you have other cooler people to hang out with? We've got a fallen down ceiling. We've got no table. And we've got quite, I'm a bad cook, so really rubbish food. (laughs) And they were like, please, can we come? And we were like, yeah, okay, come along. And you can't get the kids' work out of me. If those of you have been around this church for a long time, you'll remember this era of Heli. So we got them little party hats that they made, little ears, rabbit ears, and we did a little craft. And then it got to like nine, and Mike and I were like, we've got a Zoom call. And they're like, can we stay a bit longer? And we were like, yeah, so weird. When I was at uni, we would have not been the people to hang out with. And then this one guy, he was on the sports team, and he was like, I'm just going to text my guys and say I'm not coming tonight. And he paid a fine so that he could hang out with us for a bit longer. And we were just like, this is the weirdest thing ever. But it's because God was saying, not what have you not got? What do you not think you are? But what have you got in your house? We were like, don't look up at the ceiling. It's literally falling down. (laughs) But they loved it. And then the other day, we got a text saying, can we come and hang out again soon? And we were like, oh, oh no. Yes. (laughs) Come on in. Bring your friends. (laughs) But it's, you know, what have you got? So easily we go to, I have not got, or this is disappointing, or I have lost. But what actually have you got? What do you have in your house, in your life, in your character Because you will have been put by God unique things that other people around you don't have. I'm sure our neighbours have got way nicer lounges than we have. They've got tables (laughs) and matching plates. But our students loved our house. 
And it, it was brilliant. And we love them because <laughs> it's what we have. And it's so easy to start to, you know, one of the Ten Commandments is do not covet your neighbor's oxen <laughs> or their house, their wife. What have we got that's uniquely ours? Goodness me, what a challenge in itself. I told you this passage was deep. We haven't even got to the, set, the third verse <laughs> out of seven. Like You'll be like, come on. <laughs> but what have you got that's uniquely yours? Let's think of another metaphor for this. I sometimes think of all the things that God's poured into our lives as like seed. You know, imagine just a massive handful of seed. And some of it's for you to enjoy and to sow and to plant and see spring up and turn into something in your own life. And I'm talking about your time is the seed. I'm talking about your experiences. Those are like seeds that have uniquely come into you that will take shape. Your resources, your money, your, your physical you. Your physical you is different to someone else's physical them. Even that is, is part of the seed that God's poured into you, his life. But then within that, you can either let it all slip through your fingers and waste it, or you can hold it too tightly so that it never grows and never goes anywhere. Or you can think, right, God's given me this. How much of this is for me? And how much does God want me to sow into the lives of others? And go through with time, go through your diary. How much is you time? <laughs> How much are you sowing into the lives of others, investing in them? Go through prayer time. How much are you clinging on and how much are you sowing into the lives of others? With your money, look at your bank account. Where your treasure is, that it shows that's a map to where your heart's located. And sometimes I need to rein my heart back <laughs> from a really weird place because I've poured so much money into something. I think that was... That was not godly. <laughs> and, and so I, I'm looking at everything I've been given. And, and God doesn't give us numbers in scripture to say this amount you always have to do. <laughs> he gives ideas and guidelines and principles. So Old Testament, he said, here's a start. With all your food and the stuff that you've grown, give 10% of that back to the place you get fed, the storehouse that's the shared community area. And it's slightly different for us because we pay taxes to a system that can generate food or health care for us. But I feel, you know, not to be scary. I think those times are slightly coming to an end and it's going to go back to how the church needed to be, where we are the health care system. So we need to start praying for healing we need to start declaring war on oppression and demonic forces at work. Sow those seeds. <laughs> but he doesn't say, always give every month £100 to Joe Bloggs. He doesn't say that in scripture. He says, read my word with my spirit and walk well with what I've given you. <laughs> because it's all his. And he trusts you. And he's a very good parent some of us have been walking with God a long time. <laughs> and so we're going, God, tell me what. And he's going, you choose. <laughs> he's not controlling in that way. He just has given us a value system that we go, everything's yours really, God. And if you feel you're a bit tight, so the other week, Michael laughed at this because this is my public confession to what I've privately admitted. <laughs> so we lent... Um, uh, we, uh, in our road, we, we are kind of building community, and we're loving it. So Mike's helped someone break into someone's house before, their own house. <laughs> Clarification. <laughs> so he's now got the reputation as Mr. Fix-It, which, you know, is a very good reputation to have, even if we sometimes don't know what we're doing. He confidently walks out with another ladder. <laughs> Here! I come to save the day. Anyway, <laughs> um, there's been times the other week we were trying to do an ad, this is at Christmas, we were trying to do an advent window around St. Paul's and, you know, put our Bible verse up there and, 
yeah, that worked really well. It wasn't very good, but it got the Bible verse up. And um, we didn't have any glue, so I text my neighbour, Chrissy, have you got any glue? Yeah, sure, come round. Ra- yeah, come round. And they dropped it right. So we're already starting to share what we have. And then, so they lent me the glue. And then my other neighbour was like, can I borrow your battery charger for the car? And someone's just brought me the glue <laughs> for our window. And I'm like, no. <laughs> this is what I said inside myself. No. <laughs> my dad gave that to me. No. <laughs> and it's sitting in the house taking up space. It's not even like I'm using the thing. And so Mike was like, go on, take it round or let, let them come round and get it or we'll take it out. So Mike, because he's more generous than me and we've realised that in our relationship, he's the generous one. If you want anything from us, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> go there first <laughs> um, he's like go on take it round so Andreas and Lena they've they been um, recharging their car which breaks down probably every day let's be fair so you know they've got the, the kit and I said to Mike the other day have we got that back yet and, and Mike's sort of like because we really need it at the moment <laughs> it's like literally just sits in our house but there's something in me that's clingy Do you recognise that in yourself ever over really stupid stuff? So it challenges me to go, where am I clingy? Where where have I not invited the salvation of God in? Sorry, that was a really long-winded explanation of, do you hold things too tightly? Are you letting them just slip away and get wasted where they won't be used as seed in other people's lives? Or are you holding well and saying to God, show me, Show me, I'll plant that there, I'll invest that there, I'll put my time there, I'll listen to you, Holy Spirit, and put my money there. That's, that's the point. Anyway, I digress. What do you have? What do you have? <laughs> Think about your life that's uniquely you, your talents. There's never going to be another one of you who's experienced things, who articulates things the same way as you, who prays the way you do. <laughs> I love hanging around people who pray differently to me. Recently, we've made friends, Mike's um, particularly made friends with someone who really prays like, I bind this spirit and I loose this. And I love learning a new way. I feel like I'm all feisty about praying for things now in a way that I'd sort of got really like, oh, nice, Jesus, help me. I was like, no, this is war. Some things need to be bound and broken off people's lives. And I feel really grateful that a kind of different church cultures come into our family. Because we need those kind of prayers. Anyway, you get, I think I'm making my point. Let's go. Oh, this is still verse two. <laughs> Next bit. <laughs> I hope you're sitting comfortably because I've got more. <laughs> Listen to her response. Oh, I've kind of made my point before the verse, but here we go. She says to Elisha, God is my salvation. She dares to say to the the representative saviour, I've got nothing. (laughs) Can you imagine? And Elisha's the prophet. He's like, I can see. (laughs) I know what you've got. (laughs) And then he kind of, she sort of, I kind of imagine him looking at her going, really? But he doesn't say that. She gets there herself. Your servant has nothing there at all. And so often we can live like that, as if it's like a spirit of poverty and lack has come upon us and loss. Whereas we have got stuff. (laughs) We all have, because God gave it to us. Then she says, except a small jar of olive oil. (laughs) So she sees a tiny thing that she has got. And I wonder if today you just need to see one tiny thing and that's your start. That's the cracking, prizing open of seeing what God's put in your life, in your house, in your resources, in your you, your unique, wonderful you. What are you going to do with your amazing you while you're living? We don't know how long we've got, do we? Anyway, listen to this response. Because I love the kind of collaborative principle he's teaching us. Elisha says, go round and ask all your neighbours for empty jars. So she's got one tiny full jar, but that's her bit. They have potentially got loads of empty jars between them. She didn't ask for the full. He doesn't say go and get their oil. He says, go and get what they're not using at the moment. 
their car battery charger. <laughs> and don't ask for just a few. Isn't that amazing? And sometimes we're too proud or too stingy. We're either too proud to ask or too stingy to hear the crying out of the people closest to us when we've got stuff that we're not even using that someone else needs. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> to think that's the strategy the servant of God gave as a prophet. That's what he said to this woman who felt in lack. Just go and ask. But you're not actually taking all their resources. This is not stealing. This is borrowing and asking. It's not snatching and grabbing. It's not coveting their oxen. <laughs> it's saying, please, could I borrow? Have you got any empty jars? Because <laughs> this prophet guy, who represents the saving plan of God for my life, is telling me to come and make a request. And then there's this beautiful moment where Elisha says, go inside Shut the door behind you and your sons. Like, tuck down now. This is going to be an amazing moment for just you and your family to watch. This is not for public display now. This is me, God, working in you. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each one is filled, put it to one side. Watch the miracle. <laughs> Because the salvation of God had been invited into that house of fear, of pain, of loss, of disappointed expectations. But she did ask. She did invite and call out to God. So she left him. She shut the door behind her and her sons. She kind of tucked them all in to see what the king would do. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. <laughs> this is a miracle of God that was only possible because she had the spare neighbor's jars. <laughs> is that amazing? And so what have you got that you could pass to someone and say, I want God to do a miracle with you. Here's this, this seed this bit of time, this bit of investment, this bit of money, you sow it somewhere and see what God could do. And when all the jars were full, <laughs> mate, can you imagine? She just had tiny oil. Where is it coming from? You see, God can create out of nothing. God can change one thing to another thing, water to wine, but he can also make oil come can't he? Do you believe that? <laughs> I think I've forgotten how powerful he is. <laughs> so they were all full and she said to her son, oh bring me another one and then he replied, there's not a jar left. They were all completely full and then the oil stopped flowing. So God will fill whatever he's got <laughs> to work with. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And so she went, she told the man of God, and, she, and he said, go now, sell the oil, pay off your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. Because God, the salvation of God, was invited in. He was cried out to. He was called on. He asked, how can I help? And he helped. <laughs> Can you hear the, what the Spirit's wanting to do in you? Can you feel it? I can feel my hands trying to be prized open because they're so stingy sometimes. Or I'm tired, so I've got nothing left to pray for someone. But God's like, keep them open because I put all that in them in the first place. Don't just drop them and waste them. Don't be unwise and just chuck everything everywhere. Ask me, speak with me. Ask me how I can help you. And he cleared those debts. Jesus Christ is very good at wiping off our lives, things we owe. Emotionally, our shame wiped away. 
He's very merciful. (laughs) And even when people have been through utter trauma and robbery, he's still wanting to work and do a miracle, even if it's not maybe what she thought. I would want my husband resurrected. (laughs) But he wants her not to lose her children (laughs) and to see a miracle with what she has, not what's gone. (laughs) That's gone. But what do you have? What is left? What could God use? How does God want to use you to help clear someone else's debt? Someone else's brokenness? I, one of my favorite things is to pray for other leaders who feel like they've been robbed, not just financially, but in their lives of opportunities. And something that Mike and I just have started to really do is pray for leaders in different churches. And honestly, just to give that time to listen to stories and go, we break that off your family line in the name of Jesus. We want to see the blessing of God for you. And to stand with people. To see the things that have robbed them cleared by God. (laughs) Those debts wiped. And it's not just finance. I hope you can hear this in this story. It's not, it's so much bigger. So I can't just come and tell you about money. (laughs) It's everything about you (laughs) that God has given. There are a few scriptures I felt to just kind of machine gun out at you. (laughs) Um, Just to see if they stir anything. Because for some of us, we're living under fear and poverty. And a poverty spirit is not one that means you're actually financially poor. You can be the richest person in the world and feel diminished. (laughs) You can also be, as I saw when I went out to Rwanda, one of the most full of life people with absolutely nothing, (laughs) playing with a rock. (laughs) So it's not about how much you have. It's, is this, just ask the Holy Spirit, is this spirit operational over you? You know, a fear spirit, a poverty spirit, a feeling basically that you're going to lose everything. That is demonic. (laughs) Because God is saying, I give you life to the full. (laughs) So here's one for you. And this is not meant to be a prosperity gospel. But listen to these words from, this is Jesus. And I've said it already, but I'll say it again. The thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I have come, says Jesus that you, they, may have life and have it more abundantly. (laughs) This is 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. This is James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. No thing. Are these declarations that you need to smash in the face of fear? And poverty, mindsets, or spirits. But then, on the other side, be content with your pay. Luke 3. Do not store treasures up on earth. Moths and rust will destroy them. Robbers can break in and steal. But store your riches in heaven, where robbers can't break in. Because where your heart is, there's your treasure. You cannot serve God and money, Luke 16. It's, you know, it's both sides of the coin, isn't it? God is ridiculously abundant, blesses you loads. Take a hold of it, believe for it. And also, don't store it up. Die to yourself. It could go at any point. Do you see both sides? Deuteronomy 8, this is verse 18. Remember the Lord, he is the one who gives you the power to gain wealth. 
I really, that's a really challenging one. <laughs> what power, what's your superpower <laughs> to generate resources? And then this one, <laughs> generate resources, but also, this is Paul in Philippians 4, I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it's like to be in need and to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do this through him who gives me strength. So I think we need the strength of God. <laughs> I think we need the power of the Most High God. I think we need to remember to invite God is my salvation into our house, our bank, our money, our decisions, our time, our skills, our gifts, our emotions, you get the gist, into our everything. I think we need to remember what we have, not what we've lost or what we fear we'll lose in the future and to open our homes and our lives and our bank accounts to Jesus. <laughs> yeah? Because I need to. Because I'm the kind of person who won't share a battery charger. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> Seriously. Come on. So shall we stand if we're able to? And I do think um, to utilize how my... One of my new friends prays, you know, we have to bind this poverty and bind these fears and bind this kind of fear of the future that makes us diminish and open our hands again to see, see what God's given us. And, you know, I want to encourage us, if you have senses from the Holy Spirit and you think, right, I've seen that in Scripture... Come and share them with Joe. Because <laughs> we, we, that's part of our church family. You know, bringing the tithe into the storehouse is bringing, you know, we've been listening to God this week and journeying. What's he saying to our church family? That's part of bringing to share. <laughs> bring and share, bring and share, bring and share. It's not just me. I've been listening to the Lord. But some of you, you've, you know, this is it. <laughs> so even if it's not today, please hear that encouragement from us as the team here that we want to hear what the Lord's saying. We really desperately do. We're going to need it more and more <laughs> to hear the voice of God and the wisdom of the king, to invite Jesus into everything. So I don't know. I feel let's do some sort of kinesthetic exercise where we're imagining and visualizing. Just put your hands out in front of you. And that question is such a good question from Elisha. What do you have? <laughs> what do you have? Not what's not in your hands or not in your bank account. What do you have in your house? What's in your spirit that the Holy Spirit's invested uniquely in you? Your unique confidence in God that someone you know doesn't have. Even that is a gift. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here with us. That salvation has been invited into this house, into this church building into this family, we're here to acknowledge you as Lord. And we could look at what we've lost, and it hurts. And we could look at what we fear for the future. But we, we want to get forward-footed on this, front-footed, not reactive. And so we just decide, God, to say, what's in our hands is given from you, God. Help us to see it. Help us to hold it. Hold ourselves, even, our physical bodies. Even that is a gift from God, guys. It's part of the treasure he's invested in you as a person into this world. That you can do things others can't. You have things others don't. So we break comparison in the name of Jesus. We break it off in Jesus' name. We break all coveting of others in Jesus' name. We break poverty as a spirit over our lives in Jesus' name. We break fear in Jesus' name. And we declare that it's the thief that comes to rob and steal and destroy the enemy. But you, Jesus, bring life to the full. And you have given us so much, God, 
Please help us see it, Lord. Please help us use it for you and steward it so well and so carefully, God. Because we're your treasure (laughs) that you thought was worth dying for and you've invested in us, God. And help us to share if we've got empty jars that are just sitting around, things that are spare. Help us not to be stingy. Help us to be generous hearted. Holy Spirit, come upon us. And there might be things you realize you've got to invite God into a bit more. Just have a conversation. Imagine what you're holding and saying, God, you you talk to me about that now. You give me some numbers of how much time to invest where, how much money to invest where, how much you think's okay for me to spend on what. Lord, we just say we just need your help. Elisha said, how can I help you? So God, we, we ask for help with our ability to, to decide wisely. Thank you, Lord. And we like praying for people here, praying with, praying for. And um, if you'd like prayer for anything, it doesn't have to be anything to do with what I've shared. You know, we'll pray for healing, we'll pray for, for provision, we'll pray for your generosity anything we will pray there's people who can come up and bless what God's already started to show you yeah absolutely um please do come forward if there's anything that you'd you'd like prayer for as Heli was speaking I just had a real sense of that word fear and that mindset of fear that can be so crippling for some of us just focusing on the bad things that might happen but God doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to, to be bound by fear. He wants to bind it to him, and he wants to just say, be gone. He wants to bring that heavenly perspective. He wants to give you eyes to see joy, to see beauty, to see creation. So if that's you, please do come step yeah. forward, and we'd love to pray for you. And one of the things, I know we're not all parents here. I'm sort of a half a parent. I'm a step well, But I, I sometimes have a fear of losing the kids. And in this, you know, that's the very thing Jesus blocked in this. He blocked her loss, her fear of loss of her children. And if you've got a fear of losing your kids, even emotionally or physically, I think God, God really wants to break that fear. Because <laughs> otherwise we all get a bit clingy and strivy and annoying to them probably (laughs) so yeah lord i just pray if that's something as well just a fear of of losing losing our kids losing the not just the resources we've been given but the people the people you've trusted us with we just break that fear in jesus name pray that we'll trust you god we choose to trust you god we trust you god Trust you, God. And Holy Spirit's already ministering around the room. And if you feel you're stirred where you are, and you're around someone, you feel the Holy Spirit stirring you, breaking things, setting you free. It's so good. It's such a good thing. Just continue, Lord, to ask for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. So where you are, if you feel the Lord stirred you for something, you don't want to maybe disrupt it by coming to the front. You obviously can come to the front if you want to do that. Or if you'd rather be prayed for where you are, why don't you just pop a hand? And we'll just look around the room and see. Thank you, Lord. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue to do what you're doing. We'll come forward. I 
just want to say that scripture again that um, about the Father of lights, that every good thing comes from him. He gave it. He won't snatch it. <laughs> He's coming to stage interventions in robberies today. He's coming to break the power of demonic lies that you've believed about yourself or your situation. how can I help you <laughs> he does want to you know just had an encouragement from someone that God will absolutely put us where we need to be and someone talking about a bottle of perfume they received as a gift at Christmas and to them that signified just time for them time to themselves them time this morning it smashed completely and the, the immediate reaction was to was to say right I, that's my me time gone but instead God's brought them here and they're turning to God and God is filling them and that's exactly what he does He'll put us where we need to be. And then he'll work his magic and fill us. In, um, in the scriptures, oil often is also a metaphor for God's Holy Spirit. And I think some of us feel we're all out of Holy Spirit resources. <laughs> Even that's something he wants to do this morning, I think. Just refill you with his power. You're an empty vessel. He's delighted to fill. So we just say, come Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Fill us. be happy to come and pray who's part of our church family that would be amazing a trust in you and a confident faith that puts us on the front foot, that makes us the head and not the tail. We just say we refuse to be at the mercy of the flapping tail of the enemy when you have said we have authority to step on the head of the snake. And you've done that. You've hurled him down and made a spectacle of the enemy. So we don't want to get on the wrong side by feeling like a victim or feeling powerless, Lord. We just pray we will front foot ourselves again, Lord. Googling things. Just search the scriptures 
for how God would guide you and lead you in things. I think he's kind of giving me a picture of just like these, these scrolls being unraveled again. <laughs> and some of you have tucked them up. <laughs> and he's got so much treasure and guidance in his word that potentially, you know, could answer every single situation we ever go through. We've got it all already from his word. Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue in ministry here but um, they'll be finishing up over the road now so if you do have children or young people now's the time to um, go and collect them but by all means just rest in that place lean into what God's doing as you feel his, his spirit stir you fall. 